Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video focusing on crime in contemporary society, looking at the role of the media in causing crime. In this series so far, we've looked at how the media represents and reports crime. Another aspect of the relationship between the media and crime is how the media can cause different forms of crime. In this video, we're going to look at some of the ways in which the media can cause crime. Firstly, looking at the role of the media and the nature of capitalism and how the media can cause relative deprivation an often cited example for criminal activity. We'll also look at feminist approaches to crime and how the media promotes moral panics and deviancy amplification. Some theorists have argued that the media generates crime through promoting imitation and desensitizing individuals to the effects of crime. And finally, we'll look at how the growth of new media, particularly the internet, has led to increases in cybercrime. One way in which the media creates crime is linked to the nature of contemporary capitalist society. The media helps to promote false needs by advertising goods to individuals that generate a desire for those goods that they don't need or, and often, cannot afford. These advertisements are often specifically targeted at groups on lower incomes and are accompanied by the promotion of credit services to achieve these goods. As individuals borrow to achieve these goods, it creates a cycle of poverty from which some turn to crime to in order to escape. By promoting these goods, it also helps generate a market for counterfeit goods, which are disproportionately consumed by those on lower incomes, who want the status of having the good, but cannot afford the price of the real thing. The nature of capitalism in paying lower wages also impacts on other forms of criminality, such as TV license evasion, benefit fraud, and not paying taxes. And prosecutions for TV license evasion disproportionately impact on women, particularly single parents, who often have to choose between feeding their children and paying the bills. Similarly, the media's focus on the lifestyles and consumption patterns of the middle class generates a sense of relative deprivation for those that cannot afford the lifestyles that are promoted to them. Access to the media, particularly in Western nations, is almost universal, and therefore brands can advertise to a wide audience. This is achieved not only through advertising, but also through product placement and through artists and entertainers promoting brands as well. The inability to afford these goods leads to the strain to anime for some, with a proportion of those opting to innovate in order to achieve these goods, whilst others retreat into substance abuse to deal with the strain, which also leads to criminal activity. Feminist approaches focus on the over-sexualisation of women in the media, which makes them a target for sexual harassment and assault. Traditional media representations of women as being submissive or of relationships being based upon the pursuit of women leads men to challenge women's denial of consent rather than accepting a woman's choice. Furthermore, coverage of female victims of sexual assault and murder often focuses more on the behaviour of women leading up to the point of the attack than it does upon the actions of the male. And this type of reporting is dangerous in that it represents women's choices as deviating from expected patterns of behaviour and placing the emphasis on the control of women's behaviour rather than the behaviour of men. In other videos in this series, we've looked at the role of the media in moral panics and how moral entrepreneurs utilise the media to promote their own moral crusade. In many instances, such as knife crime and the use of drugs, this eventually leads to deviancy amplification, as the folk devils are marginalised in society and their behaviour is criminalised by the authorities. The broadcast of moral panics and the countercultures associated with them often leads to an increased membership of these countercultures, particularly when the activity is seen as desirable, such as in rave culture, and this leads to further criminalisation of these groups. However, critics, including Thornton and McRobbie, have suggested that moral panics are often outdated in contemporary society, with countercultures, particularly those associated with music, very quickly being legitimised by mainstream society in the digital age. A further explanation for how the media influences levels of crime is through imitation and desensitisation. Some, particularly conservative critics, argue that the media glamorises crime and shifts the blame for the behaviour of young people onto a range of media sources, including film, video games and music. Although there is little evidence to support these findings, 
with many being based upon weak correlations between spree killings and media usage. A further way in which the media is alleged to cause crime is through the transmission of criminal techniques. With an increased focus on true and real crime stories, it's inevitable that methods of crime will be passed on. However, the evidence to support this leading to crime is largely anecdotal, rather than being based upon empirical evidence. Some social scientists argue that the role of the media in desensitising individuals to the effects of criminal activity has led to increases in crime. However, once again, the research that backs up these findings is often inconclusive, being based on small samples or suffers from ecological validity, in that the actions of an individual in a lab setting, where there are no consequences for their actions, do not replicate those of an individual in a real-world setting, where there are consequences. A final way in which the media can cause crime is through cybercrime. Now we've looked at this as a separate video in the series, but the growth of online criminal activity is due to the expansion of online media sources such as social media. The depersonalization of cyberspace has led many people to adopt personas that troll or harass individuals, particularly those with some form of status. Cyber-enabled crime, those that utilize the expansion of communication in networks such as the internet, have led to the increase of crimes such as identity fraud. A common way of achieving access to people's details is through phishing scams, asking individuals to sign into their Amazon or Netflix account through a web page that clones their details, providing criminals with access to personal data. And finally, cyber-dependent crimes. Well, these would not exist without the media. Crimes such as the installation of ransomware and spyware are often conducted through the individual visiting a specific site that grants criminals access to the user's computer and the personal data that is stored on it. That concludes this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on crime in contemporary society, looking at the media as a cause of crime. Thanks for watching.